I pretty much grew up uh, in and around Boston uh, until I left for college. My parents, uh, John and Teresa Kilrain, had uh, seven children, all boys, one girl. I was number five in the family uh, pecking order. My older brother wrestled and uh, one day he uh, drug me to his practice. He was in high school at the time and I was in junior high. I was sitting in the wrestling room and then a couple of the younger uh, or lighter weight wrestlers asked me if I wanted to participate and roll around. And so that was it. Uh, and, you know, that kind of initially lit the spark. And then my high school had probably one of the best hockey teams in the States. Uh, but wrestling wasn't nearly as mature or strong. Uh, but because I lived so close to Boston, I was able to go into Boston on a regular basis and compete and train with uh, a lot of college and really good high school wrestlers. So we had a really good club uh, wrestling program. One of the key members of this club was a coach named Jim Peckham, who was uh, a legendary wrestling figure. To be influenced by such a, uh, a strong figure and somebody that was so knowledgeable about the sport it enabled me to, uh, to be competitive at a, at a fairly young age. I, I did a year um, at, at a prep school uh, called Blair Academy. Blair Academy had a tremendous program under the tutelage of coach Tom Hutchinson. He was a great workout partner in addition to being a, a great coach, so that was uh, kind of a, a prelude to attending Lehigh University, but the, the primary reason that I, I went to Lehigh University was it was a great school, but mostly because it had a great program, and most importantly of all that was that it had a great coach. Recruiting column was uh, maybe one of the easiest recruiting jobs I had. I think Colin went to Blair Academy with the idea of coming to Lehigh. Uh, you know, I had, I had some decent success in the sport. Uh, I think if you were to ask most wrestlers, they, they wish they could have done more or done better, and that's certainly the case with me. My brother wrestled with Colin, and so they're on the same team. So I used to, you know, obviously came up all the matches as a kid growing up. But um, as in you know, eighth, ninth grade, tenth grade, I remember coming up and watching the matches. He was kind of like one of those guys you came to see. I mean, he was just he was so intense yet so composed when you watch those matches. He was so dominant. You know, he he achieved some phenomenal feats here. I mean, his win loss record was unbelievable in the ninety some percent you know percent reigns he won. Um, he had so many. I just remember him having. A, it seemed like he had so many major decisions or greater. As far as I'm concerned, Colin Kilrain was as good as anybody I coached here at Lehigh. It was a great journey, and it was a really great ride. Leadership is leadership when it shows up. I think it's one of those things that is developed over time through your experiences, um, and I think Colin is a great example of that. Well, I've been, I've been a SEAL for, for my whole career, and that's... Uh, that's going on almost 30 years now, and uh, I really found a home. It satisfied a lot of the things that I had experienced also in wrestling, where working close teams and we we work with individuals that are highly motivated. That challenge every day of going out and perform, performing at your best, and being alert, and having goals, and being able to overcome obstacles. It was something that. Uh, when I got involved in the SEAL teams, uh, really, really satisfied a lot of the things that I had found in wrestling. I've lived and worked in the Far East, in Latin America, all throughout South and Central America, in Europe, um, Africa, and then certainly in the last almost 14 years, I've spent my fair share of time in the Mideast as well. When I had to do staff assignments, I, I tried to make them worthwhile, and so I was privileged privileged enough to work at the White House, but I've also had some key operational assignments uh, and I've worked with some un unbelievable leaders and uh, individuals that um, have helped me to grow as not only as an officer but as, uh, but as a human being. Uh, you know, quite frankly, I, you know, after 20 years I, I would have considered, um, I would have considered maybe retirement but, uh, but because we were at war, uh, there was no way that I could turn my back on my teammates. And so I, I continue to serve. I've always, always felt fortunate that I've been able to make good friends, great friends, and that I've always had people that 
looked out for me and that people that genuinely cared. And uh, that is a tremendous gift. And I don't know if I'm ever fully deserving and I don't know exactly why that was, but whether it was friends, whether it was coaches, family members, or, or bosses even, I've had unbelievable role models. My wife, uh, Susan, who is also just a, a terrific woman, a beautiful person, and she was a naval officer herself. I don't brag about her too often, although I should, because uh, she was a naval fighter pilot, a test pilot, and then she went on to become an astronaut and flew the uh, space shuttle, Columbia, twice. Well, well, clearly to be inducted into the Hall of Fame is, is, a, is a tremendous honor, and one I don't, I don't take lightly. I accept it uh, with the deepest respect, but with the, with the understanding that it's, it doesn't just represent me. It represents all the great institutions that I've ever been involved with, to include the Navy, Special Operations, uh, Lehigh University, and Lehigh Wrestling. And uh, I'm just, I just hope that I can live up uh, to these high ideals uh, for the rest of my days. What some of these guys have done here at Lehigh is secondary to what they've accomplished since that time.